No. No. Come in now. Are you there? My name's Paul there? Burns and I'm the production designer on Anomaly. Quite frankly, there's nothing we can do about that because it might just happen more and possibly more randomly. It's a very interesting story. Uh, when I first read the script, um, it, it sort of sucked me in from really the first few pages. And you know, we all read a lot of scripts. Um, and every now and again you read a script that's really, really good. And, and this, this was one of those scripts. And I think everyone says that they wanted to do this movie. The visual aspects were absolutely um, right there on the page. So as the words come off the page, um, straight away I see pictures in my head. Um, you know, the whole thing was interesting. It, it, had, it has lots of twists and different curveballs. Um, so, so I wanted it. I wanted to do it. It's interesting because it talks about fugies. Um, and I actually looked up fugie, and it's a musical term. It's like a, an interlude. Um, so straight away, it's interesting. You know, I've worked with Noel before. Um, and, you know, I respect his work and he respects my work. And the good thing about Noel, right, is he, he, does, think, he does think out the box. You know, I can be designing a set and I can think about something a certain way and he'll come along and go, what about this? And it's a curveball, you know, it's a, he comes out of left field, but you need that, which is why I like working with him. And it's, it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey because it's not a big budget movie. It's, it's a low budget movie, really. You know, this is a particularly tough film to do on a low budget. So the amount of prop makes and different things that are going on. Plus it's set in the future, so it's a period film. Technically it's a period film. Um, and we're trying to be very ambitious with what we're trying to achieve. Basically, we've, we've built one basic set in the studio. And because of the budget restraints, quite cleverly, we've redressed that set, or that set complex, and turned it into different things. We started off with it as being the uh, lab complex with the operating theater and the lab and so on. And then we redressed it as the brothel. Um, uh, so it's all the same rooms and we've made them look completely different. So I designed it with, with that in mind and it's worked very well. You, you don't realise you're in the same set of rooms. Well, I'm very well aware of that. Let me show you something. You look standing. What, what's nice about this film is that there's various sequences, you know, that come one after another. You know, the, the lab complex, for example, is a very steely, bluey grey, cold kind of feel to it. And straight from there we go to the study, and the study is a uh, wood panelled, very warm, opulent room. Um, a, a nice contrast with the, the cold, bluey colours of the lab. And then we go to um, Ryan and Dana's house, which is almost Gattaca. It's very white and minimalist, very futuristic. Um, in the brothel, it's very red, um, deep reds. Okay. So each segment of the movie has a has a, dis, uh, a distinct look. When you go to the control room um, and the hostage room, where everything has, has been covered covered over with plastic, it was in an old chapel, and. Um, I quite like that because it had a slight godlike, you know, Langham who's controlling the world, you know, am I God sort of thing. It had slight aspects of that. But again, very dark over there. Very dark. It's a dark film, so it's got to be dark. Thank you so much. 
No, no, you don't have to do this. If I don't do it, I'm gonna change back. Please. Please. Look! I'm sorry. No! The actual control room, and we built the stasis chamber, we lit it in a way with LEDs. In the script, he's floating around in a blue tank of, of liquid, you know, but we couldn't afford to do that. So I came up with this kind of tube affair, like, like you know, he's in this stasis. When we lit it, and uh, DOP got hold of it, David, and changed it a little bit, made it a bit turquoisey, a bit of red LED coming out. He put some red lights on the black plastic. The thing about black plastic is you get a really nice kick off of it. I occupy this dark, horrible world, you know. This is my world, where there's lots of character and atmosphere and disgusting things going on because it looks so fantastic. That's what I like, and that's what brothels say to me. They're dark, horrible places where dodgy, dirty things happen. So that was the, the, um, the set, really, um, that, that stood out for me. Well, the one we're sitting in now, in the script it reads as a, a sort of Con Air uh, type of uh, uh, aeroplane where it's stripped back to the, to the metal of the wires hanging down and we quite fancy something really sleek and futuristic so we've gone for this the arse end hasn't been put on it yet but it, it goes quite narrow at the end um, it's very futuristic and very high key it's going to be very bright in here so this will this will look really good I know it will Yeah, it's really nice working with a director that um, you you think something and then when you meet, we're thinking the same thing. And, and I like to think that we did that. I, I enjoy the sort of collaborative uh, aspects of working with him because I love his ideas. He throws his ideas in that, that just are out there, you know, which is what it's all about because that's when you're going to do something that's, that's different. To a fruitful collaboration. <laughs>